Thanks. I'm actually here um, in the Customer Innovation Labs in Houston. We've got Kawasaki here. We've had the Rockwell teams here. Um, so we've all been hands-on, having a great time pulling all these different parts together. Um, today, we're just going to focus on the initially on the Azure Percept section, though. So let's dive right in. In the customer example you saw, they were looking to deploy intelligence, the kind of connected cameras, so they could monitor the robots um, on the production line and get automated alerts whenever there was an issue. Um, with Percept, we get this real easy end-to-end -end platform for creating and deploying AI solutions to the edge. Um, let's assume that I've already connected the cameras to the surrounding sensors and um, to an edge device like Azure Stack HCI, that's connected to Percept, and we also have the connections into Azure and IoT Hub. So starting from there, um, if I go right to the Azure Percept Studio, um, I just click in here, get started. From there, it's just simply into create solution. Um, you know, basically just select the name, um, the devices that they're coming from, and any of the kind of required Cognizant services. Uh, for this demo, this is all pre-populated for me, so we're good to go. That's my Once you kind of set up, I see I get this gallery view. If I had more streams from these devices, I could filter those. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and open up this stream and just make sure it's the right stream. So you can see here we've got the Kawasaki robot. We have Rockwell's Magnamotion um, in place here. We have their PLC streaming to us. We had real-time robotics, um, also sending real-time commands to the Kawasaki stream. So pulling together lots of sensors and then obviously the Percept camera stream here. So this is the cell that I want to work with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get in there to start applying some of these AI skills. Um, in this scenario, we really want to train an object detection model. Um, so the camera can detect a box um, further down the production line. If it detects that there's a box, um, then that means that the robot didn't actually successfully pick it up and transfer it. Um, so basically, that's an issue that we want to highlight. We'll choose to train an AI model um, in custom vision. And to do this, we basically use um, the Azure Custom Vision link here. That's where we're going to get transferred from. But I'm actually really excited to say that we'll be fully integrating this experience into the Percept Studio um, in the coming year. So it'll be a lot more seamless. So once I'm in Azure Custom Vision, it's actually super easy to train and deploy a model. Um, so let's just assume for the sake of time, we've already got these models in here. These are individual pictures, some that have boxes and some that don't. Um, so what I want to do now is kind of head on in here and actually start teaching the robot or teaching the ML here, the vision, how to detect whether or not there's a robot. And I do that by simply just telling it. So if I select one here and I tag this as to say there, there is a box, and that's teaching the model that, okay, when I see that, that's what a box looks like. And then I'll go through the other ones here and teach it what a box doesn't look like. Um, there's lots of other scenarios we can do this for, like quality inspection, um, understanding where people move through areas. And we did an amazing one with the drone and leak detection. So it's a really great solution to be able to really effectively get into machine learning. And let's just say you know, I've trained the whole thing, um, and now I can seamlessly also deploy that down and um, to see it in the actual runtime. So. Um, here we go, here's an example of the model actually trained doing the inference, and we can actually see the model highlighting boxes and not boxes for potential misses, um, and then we can integrate that whole stream um, into the whole solution, because there's so many pieces to this example here. We've got the robot arms, we've got controllers, we've got sensors, and so being able to kind of seamlessly integrate another input um, really helps bring the whole picture together when we're trying to solve a problem for the customer. Um, with that in mind, let's take a look over and look at the Azure Digital Twin um, landscape here. So this is really where we're modeling the entire scenario. Um, you know, in Kawasaki's case, we've got contextual, we've got spatial insights, and we've got that coming from one or more facilities. Um, the model, it kind of imports aspects of the real world alongside that live telemetry from sensors, structure, and semantic information. We've also got behavioral and AI models, for, but all of this kind of being visualized in 2D and 3D. So it's bringing together a lot of information, a lot of context, um, and we want to be able to model that and accurately connect it to the real-time stream. So Here's a simple digital twin. Um, I really want to kind of zoom in and look at the specific piece of equipment that we were just building out there. So I'm going to go ahead and search for the, the cell number seven. We can pull that up. Yeah, and then we drill down into the seven number here. You actually see all the different parts that are connected to it. So I've got the different sensors. I can see the Percept stream. I got pressure sensors. I can see Rockwell's uh, magna motions coming in here, um, along with the count and the actual robot itself. Um, I could also come in and manipulate different parameters, whether that's for alerting, for setting minimums and maximums. Um, and so in here, if we've got pressure differences, if we have other areas that we wish to trigger alerts and notifications, we can kind of configure that right in there. 
So this is great for the kind of 2D view, understanding relationships, understanding what's connected. Um, but how do we really empower users to visualize this complex environment and really make sure they're being led to the right types of alerts and notifications so they can drive action? So here we can actually start using the new 3D scenes capability. So if I jump on over into here, um, let's assume I've already uploaded the 3D model and done the very simple configuration to bring this digital twin scene to life. Um, I'm being highlighted straight out the gate that I've actually got an anomaly. Um, so one of the alerts is triggering. Uh, by clicking on that, it takes me straight to where the issue actually is. So here I can see the 3D representation. I can see the arm that's having some trouble with the suction robot. Um, I actually run this line, and so I actually know that we've just changed out one of the SKUs. It's a heavier SKU, and therefore we actually do need to adjust the pressure settings on the suction. Um, here when I can confirm some settings, and I can deploy a control strategy that I'm already comfortable with, and that I know will make those adjustments. It'll do the safety checks and then make sure that it can deploy so what we've seen there is kind of an end-to-end -end demo showing just um, deployment of the vision systems using Percept. And we saw how we configured and brought visualization to a digital twin um, and how we brought together all of our partners and solutions into kind of one holistic view that brought the insights right to the people that needed them when they needed it. So um, thanks for seeing that briefly. A lot more to come and a lot more to details we can go into. But um, Carol, why not? I'll pass it back to you. What a powerful tool. Thank you so much for sharing that, Andy.